Thank you for your word that brings light to every heart. We're asking, O oh Lord, tonight that the words that come will not be empty in Jesus' name. That the word will not be lost on the preacher. The word will not be lost on all our leaders, our overseers, everywhere, our workers as well, in Jesus' name. We pray that the word will not be lost on the congregation of the Lord here and everywhere in Jesus' name. Let your word make a definite impact, a transforming effect in every life, mine, and all the brethren in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. That all the amen you can say. Amen. God bless you. You can see down. Tonight we are coming to James chapter 2. And we're looking at the concluding verses of chapter 2, verse 20, all through to verse 26. Look at it, James chapter 2, reading from verse 20. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. Look at verse 21. In verse 21 it says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac a son upon the altar? Verse 22. In verse 22, seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. Verse 23, it says, and the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. In verse 24, it says, see you see then how that faith, how that works, by works a man is justified and not by faith only. In verse 25, it says, likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and uh, had sent them out another way. Verse 26, the conclusion of the whole chapter. It tells us, and it says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works, faith without corresponding action, 
faith without visible result, effect, faith without character, faith without the behavior of a true believer, faith without fruit is dead also. But look in at justification by faith and alone, by faith alone, and uh, faithfulness after afterwards. We're looking at this on the three perspectives. We're looking at number one, Abraham's justification by faith alone without works. Number two, it's Abraham's justification of friendship by worthy work, a worthy work. Number three, abiding as the just through faithfulness to the word. Look at number one here. Now, as you look at the whole passage, the passage is talking about faith and it's talking about fruit. The passage is talking about faith and it's talking about the visible action, the visible behavior, the accompanying action that follows the faith. You see, there are people that have thought that James did not get it right. They felt that Paul, the apostle, got it right because that's what they want to hear. That's what they think they want to know. They said Paul the apostle talked about salvation. And salvation is justification. Justification is redemption. Justification, redemption is reconciliation with God. And Paul the apostle said it right. And he said that justification is by faith without works that were justified, that were saved, that were redeemed, were reconciled unto God by faith and faith alone, no works at all. But James is saying, do you see that Abraham was justified by faith through his works? He said, there you are. Do you see contradiction in the Bible? No, sir. There's no contradiction. Now, Paul, the apostle, was talking about the faith by which you enter into the kingdom of God. Everything you have done before does not come in now. Because all our good works, all our righteousnesses, they are filthy rags. And they do not qualify us to enter into the kingdom of God. In the case of James, he was not talking about the faith to enter. He was talking about faith to express you are now in and you are walking in in the path of life, in the path of righteousness. They're talking about two different things. And actually, when you study Paul the Apostle, he spoke about faith to enter that one is faith without words. He also spoke about faith that expresses your life, your action. And he says that is the faith that walketh by love. That's now your insight. You want to show that you're now a child of God and you have the faith. The fruit must be there. That's why he said, if any man be in Christ, you have entered by faith without works. Now you are in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. That's the works after you have entered. All things have become, he said, in Titus chapter 2, chapter, Titus chapter 3, verse 14, it says, Titus, tell them, emphasize it to them. That's Paul the Apostle. Let ours also learn to maintain good works. He tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, it says, We're created unto good works. That means that there's no contradiction for you before you enter. You are thinking of, how do I enter? Do I bring my self-righteousness? Do I bring my works? Do I bring all my activities? It says, leave that behind. That will even disqualify you. But you come. Nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to the cross, I clinch faith without works. But now when you enter, when you come in, 
for you are now a child of God, your action will show the presence of faith in your life. Bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance. God is not unrighteous to forget your good works which you have shown. Now we have good work, we have Christ-like behavior, we have fruit that follows the faith. And that's what James is talking about. Yes, as you enter, we talk about the justification we have by faith alone without works. It tells us um, in Romans chapter 4, reading from verse 1. Romans chapter 4, we're looking at verse 1. It says, what shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, as pound? Look at verse 2. In verse 2, it says, for if Abraham were justified by works, if Abraham entered into the kingdom by works, he has whereof to glory, but not before God. Look at verse 3. In verse 3, it says, For what says the scripture? Abraham believed God, and he was counted unto him for righteousness. So, Abraham entered into the kingdom. Abraham was reconciled with God. Abraham was justified by faith that he had in the Lord. In the coming Lord, that's why Jesus said, Abraham rejoiced to see, to see my days, and was glad, and he rejoiced. That's my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ without works without works righteousness was imputed unto him now we divide this to three parts number one number one we're looking at justification and reconciliation impossible without with works in the flesh the works we have in the flesh the activities were done Without the grace of God, the fruit will bear by the flesh alone. They are not reckoned with as we come to know the Lord for our salvation. Number two, it's justification with righteousness imputed without works but by faith. We come to the Lord. We want to be justified. Somebody comes to the law court. He's been guilty in his life. He's been, he's going to be judged. And he's going to bear the consequence of his evil deeds. And he comes. And what's he bringing? Argument? No. What's he bringing? You know, some of the good works I have done greater than my evil works. No, he comes pleading. And then there is the advocate. There is the Messiah. There is the mediator that paid the whole price for him. And now he says, not of me, but because of him. That is what brings the justification without works. And then the righteousness of the Lord is imputed unto him. Look at number three. Number three is justification with regeneration imparted without worthiness and through faith. Not worthy of anything by himself. Not worthy without grace. Not worthy without the love of God that so loved the world and gave his only begotten son that whosoever whosoever the greatest of sinners, the worst and the vilest of sinners, whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life without personal worthiness, without the good that I have done, but through faith. That is justification that brings regeneration. Regeneration is a transformation within the heart. 
regeneration is a total transformation. The faith that we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ brings regeneration and brings transformation and all that through faith. And if you're going to come into the kingdom, it's through faith. That's why you don't have to wait for anything. I'm waiting to clean up everything I've done in the past, necessary, not necessary to enter. It's all by faith. I'm waiting to turn over a new leaf, not necessary. It is by faith. I'm, I'm waiting to correct every bad thing I've done, every lie I've done, not necessary. Come in, come in. Because tomorrow might be too late. Look at that thief on the cross. Remember me, Lord, when you come with your kingdom. What did he have? What could he do? Not water baptism, not available. For him, he was on the cross. And not anything that he could do or had done. And Jesus said, I say unto you today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. The man was justified by faith without works. Let's come to number one. Number one, we're looking at justification and uh, reconciliation. Impossible with works in the flesh. The works of the flesh. Everything we do in that category, they do not merit anything in the presence of the Lord. We're looking at uh, Romans chapter 4 verses 1 and 2. Again, it says, what shall we say then that Abraham, our father, what does that mean, our father? Number one, naturally, the father of the Jews, the father of the Jews, they are the natural children. Number two, the father of all that believe in Christ. The father of the people that have done bad, they have done evil, they are Gentiles, they have been in darkness, they have been idolaters, they have been worshipping idols, and now they come. And how do they come? They come like Abraham came. They come because the father God in heaven has invited them. And as they come in, they come, nothing in their hands to bring. Simply to the cross, they are clinging. What shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, has found? Look at verse 2. In verse 2, it tells us, For if Abraham were justified by works, if Abraham could claim any marriage, if Abraham could claim anything that he, look at me, I did this, that's why I was saved, I did this, that's why I was reconciled, I did this, that's why I was, I was uh, justified. If Abraham could, if he were justified by works, he has whereof to glory, but not before God. That means he did nothing. Look at Joshua chapter 24. We're looking at verse 2. And look at the background of Abraham. And look at the life he lived before he entered at the entry point into the kingdom of God. It is by faith. It says, and Joshua said unto all the people, thus says the Lord God of Israel, your fathers dwelt on the other side of Jordan, of the flood, in old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nahor, and they served gods, and they served idols. So, Abraham did not have anything to boast about. I come because I'd been clean. I come because I was good. I come because I was righteous. Nothing like that. They served God. He came just as he was. And just like today, every sinner can come. Every sinner ought to come just as you are. Uh, look at uh, Look at Isaiah chapter 51, and I'm reading from verse 1. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 1, hearken to me, ye that follow after 
righteousness. And ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock, whence ye are hewn, and uh, to the hole of the pitch. Look at that. From whence ye are deep. Look at verse 2. And it says in verse 2, look unto Abraham at your father, and unto Sarah that bear you, for I called him alone, and blessed him, and increased him. He was dug from the pitch and the hole of idolatry, of defilement, of degradation. Nothing in your hand you bring. We're well, looking at Romans chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 10. Romans chapter 3, verse 10. This is where we have all been. This is where we all came from. In Romans chapter 3, verse 10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none righteous of all the descendants of Adam, of all the offspring of Adam. There is none righteous, no, not one. There's no one that can come before the Lord and say, here am I, I come on my own merit. I come with my own worthiness. No, nobody can say that because you see, there is no reconciliation with God for the works of the flesh, with what we have done. There is no reconciliation, justification with God, with anything we can produce out of our own strength. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, there is none that understandeth there is none that seeketh after God. There is none that seeketh after God. Oh, you say, I know people that seek after God. No, they are not seeking after God. They are seeking after bread and butter. They are seeking after what he can give them. They are seeking after the things of this world. They are seeking after money. They are seeking after the influence. They are seeking after position. They are seeking after whatever. But in the real sense, there is none that seeketh after God, it tells us in verse 12, in verse 12 it says that they are all gone out of the way. Everyone, 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 they are all gone out of the way. They are all together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. So you cannot come to God. You want to enter into the kingdom of God and then you look at what you think that good thing you do but you know there is a private agenda for that thing you did and you want to come to God. Look at the good I did underneath, underneath at the bottom of that good thing you thought you did there was a depravity and there was an evil disposition. There was a kind of thought you are doing this so they will see you. You are doing this so you'll be recognized. You are doing this so that you'll be honored. You are doing this so that, so that, so that. Everything we have done is changed by the thoughts we have. It's changed by all the, you know, all the thoughts we have had. That's why it said there is none that has done good. No, not one. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, their throat is an open sepulcher with their tongues. They have used the seed, and the poison of herbs is under their leaves. The poison of herbs is under their leaves, not on top of their leaves, not on top of their tongue. There's something hidden there. That even the good they think they are doing, it injures people spiritually. Because there is poison under their leaves. How can we come to God then and say we're bringing something? God, look at the good thing I've done. Can I use it to reconcile myself to you? No. Can I use this to befriend you? No. They are poisonous. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, it says, Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, their feet are swift to shed blood. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Well, somebody might not kill, but Jesus said, 
if you are angry with your brother, you are a murderer. And how many times every human being, before we came into the kingdom, we indulged in anger. And the anger is interpreted by God as murdering. And if you had chance, you would have done something more terrible to that person you hate and to that person you are angry with. The feet are swift to shed blood in verse 16. Verse 16 says, destruction and misery are in their ways. Look at verse 17. In verse 17 it says, and uh, the way of peace they have not known. The way of peace, somebody might be in church for how many years now, if the fellow does not have the heart of Christ, the mind of Christ, the spirit of Christ, the nature of Christ, he'll not know the way of peace. He will, you know, trouble this and trouble that, and he will not know how to be at peace in his heart, not know how to be at peace in his life, and there is peace in reconciliation. There is peace when you come to the Lord by faith and you are justified, but these ones, all people on earth, until you meet Christ, of all the people you know, there is at least one enemy. Of all the people they are working with, there is at least one enemy. Of all the people they interact with, there is at least a person they don't like to see, they don't like to hear, because they have not manifested the faith that enters into the kingdom. Look at verse 18. In verse 18 it says, there is no fear of God before their eyes. The people who are outside the kingdom, no matter, they might be religious, they might be whatever, there is no fear of God before their eyes. They never think, how does God look at this? How will God judge this? How will God appreciate this? They just act. They just do whatever they want to do because there is no justification. There is no reconciliation with God. There is no regeneration. There's no transformation in their lives. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Verse 19, in verse 19 it says, now we know that what things soever the law says, it says to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. All the world guilty before God. Therefore, there is no justification or reconciliation ever possible for the works of the flesh. We're looking at number two here. Number two, we're looking at justification with righteousness, imputed, imputed without the works, but by faith. It tells us in Romans chapter 4. In Romans chapter 4, we're looking at verse 3. It says, For what says the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. That word counted to him for righteousness. What does it mean? Look at verse 22. In verse 22 it says, and therefore it was imputed. It was imputed to him righteousness. That's how Abraham got the righteousness. It was imputed unto him. He came with nothing in his hand. He came with nothing to recommend him. He came with nothing to make him worthy. And he said, Lord, I believe. And it is that faith in, in the Lord because of the coming Christ. Is that faith that brought that justification and that imputation actually that was in genesis chapter 15 
look at verse 6. Genesis chapter 15, verse 6. And he believed in the Lord. Far back in Genesis. He believed in the Lord. From the beginning of the Bible. You, you know, people think that salvation, justification only came at the time when Jesus died on the cross. And there are people that will say, you know, all those people that followed Christ, Simon Peter, James, John, Matthew, all the others, they were not born again. Righteousness was not imputed unto them. They say, because Christ had not died. They said it's only after the cross that righteousness becomes imputed unto anyone but look at this far back in genesis and he believed in the lord and it was it was counted and he counted it to him for righteousness that that the faith in hebrews chapter 11 reading from verse 8 hebrews 11 reading from verse 8 by faith by faith abraham not by works by faith abraham not by trying to do my best by faith abraham not by turning over a new leaf by faith abraham not by going to an a church an assembly a fellowship somewhere by faith abraham not by changing my dress by faith abraham not by joining a congregation of people and learning and acting like them mimicking them not by copycat, copying them, how they dress, how they talk, how they move, how they bend, how they kneel. No, by faith, we bring nothing in our hand. We know we're not qualified. It's not a meritorious thing. We didn't merit anything. But by faith, Abraham when he was called to go out into the place which he should after receive for an inheritance it says that he obeyed and he went out not knowing whether he went by faith and that's how we come to the lord today we don't know anything the past does not qualify us. The presence, the presence does not make us marriage anything, but we come because he has called me. He called you. He's come to call everyone to repentance. So everything in the past, everything at the present, you leave and then you come unto the Lord. We're looking at uh, number three here. Number three is justification with regeneration. Imparted without worthiness and through faith. Justification with regeneration. Now imparted. One word imputed. The other word imparted. When we couldn't pay for anything we have done. Christ has paid it all. And because he's paid it all, we believe in him. As we believe in him, he imputes his righteousness on us. The righteousness we did not have. He had that righteousness. And he said, give me your sin and I give you my righteousness. And we accepted the deal. We gave him our sin. And he gave us his righteousness. That's imputation. But it doesn't leave us like that. Imputation that belongs to him coming to us. Impartation. Now, he imparts that righteousness he touches our nature he touches our heart he touches our spirit and now he imparts that unto us he changes our nature and he gives us the divine nature and because of that impartation now we can live the way he wants us to live i'm crucified with christ 
Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And so the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the face of the Son of God who loved me and uh, gave himself for me. Impartation. We're told in uh, Titus chapter 3. And I'm reading here from verse 5. In Titus chapter 3 verse 5, not by works, the works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us look at that he saved us mercy grace love according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration he washed us he took the defilement away he washed our nature he washed our hearts he washed what we have been and that depravity does not continue in us it washed us it says by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the holy ghost that the change that came well, we're looking at romans chapter 5 and we're reading from verse 18. romans chapter 5 verse 18 it says wherefore as by the offense of one judgment came upon all to condemnation everything we did brought condemnation even when we did what was superficially good the spirit of god said in our heart yes you did something uh, good superficially good but what was your intention are you not throwing down water to get so that you can wet, go on wet ground are you not doing that because you're expecting this if everybody around was blind if everybody around you couldn't see the good thing you are supposedly doing will you see that will you do that if the people who can say well done if there's nobody to say well done if there's nobody to congratulate you if there's nobody to praise you would you have done that you would not now that means then condemnation came upon all but now it says that the righteousness of one the free gift he has came upon all men unto justification of life because christ died he gave up his righteousness so that you can receive that righteousness look at verse 19 there in verse 19 it says for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners so by the obedience of one of christ shall many be made righteous many made righteous romans chapter 6 we're looking at verse 18 in romans chapter 6 verse 18 it said being then made free made free is somebody that made us free it's christ that made us free it is his um, work on the cross that made us free you can't do that yourself you can't make that for yourself you if you tried by yourself you don't look to calvary if you tried by yourself you don't look to christ you will still be as dirty as you were but be made free from sin he became the servants of righteousness he became the servants of righteousness look at verse 22 in verse 22 it tells us but now being made free from sin and become servants to god ye have your fruit unto holiness ye have your fruit unto holiness fruit does not come except we plant the seed we plant the seed the seed must be planted it must germinate it brings up the tree and then the fruit will grow 
the seed of the word has to be planted in our heart before we can bring forth the fruit of holiness holiness nobody can have that holiness somebody might have a kind of superficial holiness a kind of pharisaic holiness externally holy but inwardly corrupt inwardly evil inwardly of dead men's bones inwardly hypocritical but it's when the seed of the word is planted in our heart and when the seed of the woman enters in our heart that as he lives in us then the fruit of holiness will grow and will show and be evident it tells us there then but now be made free from sin and be and ye become and become the servants to God ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life without holiness they're not going to live eternally with God he is holy and because he's holy he lives in a holy place heaven and is surrounded by holy angels and the redeemed of the Lord who have gone before us they are also holy and for you to get to heaven you must not have that holiness and you cannot have the holiness anywhere except you come to the Lord by faith and you are justified by faith and he imputes the righteousness of Christ upon you and imparts unto you the holiness which is acceptable to God for you to follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord we're coming to point number two point number two we're looking at Abraham's justification of friendship by the worthy a worthy work now we're talking about something else about Abraham Abraham at the faith without works now Abraham also had the face with works that's why God said Abraham walk before me and be thou perfect I, I accepted you into the kingdom accepted you to enter without works you didn't walk right but accepted you and imputed unto you righteousness now you have entered now you have come into the kingdom you know what you're to do now you have to walk before me and without perfect and that one is a continuous thing the other faith without works is an instantaneous thing enter instantaneous Take the step of faith and enter. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Enter. There's nothing to waste time about. You're not trying to dig anything. You're not trying to do anything. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And the Philippian jailer entered in without works but now it took them the same hour of the night and he washed their wounds he was he had entered now and he washed their wounds he had entered now and he gave them meal in his own house that is you have entered now show the evidence of that faith by what she do. Look at Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, come down. Make haste. For I must abide in thy house today. That one, he can come down. And the Lord will abide in his house today by faith, not by what? After coming in, as, well, as he came down, he said, Lord, up of my goods I give to the poor. He didn't have to do that to enter in, but 
the stinginess and the craftiness and everything in taken away now by entering in. He has to show the evidence that I have entered in. And also, he says, if I've taken anything by false accusation from anyone, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said, salvation is come to this house. His heart was now changed. An impartation has now been given. The stinginess of the past is now gone because he has entered in now. And Abraham now became a friend of God because of the worthy work. And look at James chapter 2 verse 20. It says, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Somebody is running around. I'm saved. I'm saved. No change of life. I'm saved, I'm saved. There's no clean character. I'm saved, I'm saved. There is nothing to show for it. He said, the man is vain because his manners are vain. The man is vain because his profession is vain. The man is vain because his action, his attitude is vain. Will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Look at verse 21. In verse 21, was not Abraham a father justified by works when he had offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar? Oh, somebody says, this one I don't understand. Justified by faith, Romans chapter 4. And here in James, justified by works. Let me explain. Justified by faith, Genesis chapter 15. Before he had any child, Isaac had not been born. And the Lord called him out of the, all the Chaldees. And he didn't know where he was going and the Lord said, come out. Like God says, come out from among them. And he separate, says the Lord, and I will be a father unto you. And you shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord. And he came out and was justified by faith. After many years, after chapter 15 of Genesis, Come to chapter 6, chapter 7, uh, chapter 17, uh, chapter 18, chapter 19, uh, chapter 20, chapter 21. Isaac was born, and Isaac was growing. Chapter 22, Isaac had grown to the point he could ask the question, my father, my father, here is the wood. And there is fire. Where is the lamb for the sacrifice? Many years between chapter 15 of Genesis and chapter 22. But now God was asking for another thing. What was he asking for? To, make, to, to find out whether Abraham loved God with all his heart, with all his soul, and with all his mind. Whether Abraham loved God above Isaac, whether Abraham actually will behave like a friend of God. He had become a friend of God. And now God was asking his friend, and was saying, offer him to me on the altar, on the mountain, that I will show you. And he obeyed God. Justification by works. After justification by faith. And that's what happened here, that Abraham's justification of friendship, to justify the friendship, to justify, you say you are my friend, can you do anything and everything I command you? Can you give me back what I have given you? Yes, I will. That's the worthy work. We're looking at three things here. Number one, we're looking at the faith and friendship of the justified Abraham. 
justified already by faith. And now he became a friend of God. Justify that friendship. Number two, the faith and faithfulness of justified appointees. The Lord has appointed. And because the Lord has appointed, like he appointed Abraham to be the father of many nations, the faithfulness he requires after that appointment. Number three, in the faith and fellowship of justified ambassadors. Look at number one. Number one, we're looking at the faith and friendship of the justified Abraham. We're told in James chapter 2. James chapter 2. We're looking at verse 22. In verse 22 it says, Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works he was, by works was the faith made perfect. Verse 23. In verse 23, and the scripture was fulfilled which says Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. When he was in the all the Chaldees was not a friend of God. When he was with his father and Nahor, he was not a friend of God. Before he came out and believed on the Lord, he was not a friend of God, but he had faith in God. After that, he was a friend of God, and now he justified the friendship. Isaiah chapter 41, reading from verse 8. Isaiah 41, verse 8. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, the seed of Abraham, the offspring of Abraham, my friend. God said, it's my friend. A, a friend of God that could offer his only son unto God. That's a real friend. We're looking at uh, Exodus chapter 33, verse 11. Exodus chapter 33, and from verse 11, and the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. And the Lord spake face to face. That's what he did with Abraham. Abraham, do you know I have something to do in Sodom? I'll tell you. Your sin has come up to me up to the heavens and I'm going to destroy them but I, I can't do anything without telling you a friend of God and Abraham said Lord can, can we talk about you friend to friend what if you see 50 righteous people there will you still destroy them no I will not hold on God don't go yet what if you see 40 people there 30 people there, 20 people there, 10 people there. I will not destroy them for the 10. He spoke to Abraham like he spoke to Moses face to face as a man spoke to his friend. Now, what made him to have that is faith with a worthy work. Faith with a worthy work. It tells us in John chapter 15, John chapter 15, we're reading from verse 13. It says, greater love has no man than days that a man lay down his life for his friends. God the Father had a friend, Abraham. God the Son has many friends, the disciples and the believers today. Then in verse 14, it tells us, Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. The justification of the friendship we have with the Lord 
his obedience were his friends and he says here my friends if you do whatsoever i command you he says blessed are the meek for they shall inherit there and we become meek by grace by the grace of god we don't have that meekness before entering in now we have entered in and we're the friends of jesus and we bring meekness gentleness humility lowliness into our hearts to justify our friendship with him it says yeah my friends if you do whatsoever i have commanded you here we are we bring a gift to the altar and we remember that somebody has urge against us we don't say that's his business that's his cup of tea he has something against me don't mind him no he says the lord says leave your gift at the altar and go reconcile with him and come back and offer your gift we don't we don't have to do that to get salvation but now we're saved we're justified by faith without works but now we're friends of christ and because we're friends of christ we don't just live a life you know over there we step on that person's toe we step on that person's mind we step on that person's ear we step on that person's eyes and then if he minds that that's his business no because we're friends of god we do what christ says because now we're justifying our friendship with him he tells us in verse 15 in verse 15 it says henceforth i call you not servants for the servant knoweth not what his lord doeth but i have called you friends for all things that i have heard of my father have i made known unto you like the father made known unto abraham because he's his friend everything he wanted to do in sodom he said we're now his friends and because of that he does not leave us in darkness he wants to do this and he says he has told us everything he wants to do why for us to justify our friendship with him. I cannot go about now saying, well, I walk by faith without works, faith without works, faith without works. No, it's not faith with your work. It's not faith with your worthy work. It's not faith with your worthy action, with your worthy behavior. Faith and friendship of the justified Abraham. We're looking at number two here is faith and faithfulness of justified appointees. We're looking at uh, James chapter 2, reading from verse 24. You see then how that by works, by action, by behavior, by sacrifice, a man is justified not by faith only it is combining two uh, sides of justification here there's the justification at the entry point there's the justification for expression expression of his friendship with god expression of his faithfulness to god expression of his present abiding faithfulness unto god the justification that comes by faith at the beginning the justification that comes by the expression of faithfulness while you are walking with the lord it tells us in james chapter 2 reading from verse 24 you see then how that by works a man is justified a believer is justified a friend of god is justified you see then how that a person that is walking in the perfection that god requires is justified not by faith only hey, look at nehemiah chapter 9 and we're reading here from verse 7 nehemiah chapter 9 verse 7 
thou art the Lord, the God, who did choose Abraham and brought him forth out of all of the Chaldeans and gave him the name of Abraham. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, and the foundest is heart faithful. Found his heart faithful. Found his heart faithful before thee. And made a covenant with him to give the land of the Canaanites and the, and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Jebusites and the Gagashites to give it. I say to his seed, and has performed thy words, for thou art righteous. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, still talking about Abraham, Abraham. And it says, And did see the affliction of our fathers in Egypt, and Hardest the cry by the Red Sea. It tells us that for Abraham, God fulfilled his word. And God, even after he had died, God continued to fulfill his word to his descendants because he found him faithful. Think about us believers today in First Corinthians chapter 4, reading here from verse 2. First Corinthians chapter 4, reading from verse 2. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. It's required in you, it's required of me, that a man, that a woman, that a believer, that a friend of Christ be found faithful. It tells us in verse 16 of that same chapter in um, First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. In verse 17, verse 17 affirms for this cause I have sent unto you Timothy, who is my beloved son, and faithful in the Lord, and faithful in the Lord. The people will be recognized as the followers of Christ, the people will be entrusted with something God is doing. That the people who are faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. It tells us in Galatians chapter 4, reading from verse 7, Galatians chapter 4, verse 7, Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Look at verse 17. In verse 17, Look at Colossians chapter 4. In Colossians chapter 4, we're looking at verse 7. Colossians now chapter 4. And in verse 7, it says, And my stage shall Titicus declare unto you, who is a beloved brother and a faithful minister. A faithful minister. The people we can trust today, the people we can bring along, like Paul brought this man along, they're the people who are faithful. They're faithful in little things, they're faithful in big things, they're faithful to the word, they're faithful to the way of the Lord. And it says, a faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. Look at verse 17. In verse 17, it tells us, it says and say to Archippus, take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord that thou fulfill it. 
that you have faithfulness and that you remain faithful through sick and thin. In the dry season, in the rainy season, when the, when the weather is conducive, when the weather is contrary, when you feel happy, when you feel unhappy, when you're sad, when you are glad, faithfulness unto the Lord. We're looking at number two here. Number two here is the face and fellowship of justified ambassadors. The face and the fellowship of justified ambassadors. It tells us in James chapter 2, reading from verse 25, it says, likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works Hold on. You remember we've been talking about justification by faith and justification by what? First, justification by faith. When she saw those spies that came from uh, the people of Israel, she recognized and she said, we have heard what the Lord had done in Egypt. Now you crossed the Red Sea and what you did to those unbelieving kings and our hearts had no strength and all our people are afraid because of you. And then she said, this is her faith. She said, we know the Lord had given you the land and also pleaded, give me chance and give me, give me a promise that you will not destroy me when you come and save me and save my household. Receiving them like that, protecting them like that, confessing that God truly had given them the land. And I want to be part of the people, the covenant people of God, that's justification by faith. But now, the next thing, having known that God had given them the land, and she wasn't going to fight against them, she wasn't going to report them to the king, she wasn't going to expose them to danger, and if she protected them, that the justification by works. And that's what he's saying here, likewise also, was not really have the harlot justified by works, when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way, these were justified. And now she wanted to be part of the children of Israel. That's a fellowship. That's a fellowship. That's a fellowship that, uh, you know, I'm saved by faith, but I want to retain the fellowship with the people of God. And I will need that kind of of fellowship. We're told in First John chapter 1, First John chapter 1, we're reading from verse 3, that that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. Fellowship with us. And how do, we, how do we maintain that fellowship? By continuing with the doctrine, by continuing with the demand, by continuing with the desires of the Lord and the desire of the assembly. It says, truly, a fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, reading from verse 42. In verse 42, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. Fellowship. You see, we have faith in the Lord, we enter in. And to stay in, we maintain that faith with the fellowship we have with the people of God. They continue steadfastly uh, in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. We're coming now to point number three. Point number three, we're looking at abiding as the just through faithfulness to the Lord. Faithfulness to the Lord. We enter in. We have come in. And now we want to abide as the just people just justified. And that in faithfulness to the word. 
in Habakkuk chapter 2, reading from verse 4, Habakkuk chapter 2, and we're looking at verse 4, Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. You know, there are people that say that the Old Testament people did not have faith. Of course, they had faith. Moses had faith in God. Abraham had faith in God. Joshua had faith in God. David had faith in God. And he trusted the Lord. I say had faith in God. He even said that the Gentiles will put their trust, their faith in you. And it says over here, Old Testament, that Joshua shall live by his faith. Look at Romans chapter 1 verse 17. In Romans chapter 1 verse 17 it tells us for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith. Look at Galatians chapter 3 verse 11. In Galatians chapter 3 Verse 11, it says, But that no man is justified by the law in, his, in the sight of God. It is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Over and over and over, the just shall live by faith. We enter in by faith. We continue to walk in the narrow path, in the highway of holiness, by faith. And then we end up by faith. These all died in faith. By faith. Faith all the way through. We're looking at three things here. Number one, we're looking at the propitiation for the justified by faith in his worthiness. Number two, the perseverance of the justified in faithfulness to the word. Faithfulness to the word. Number three, the path of the just by faith in the word. Look at number one. Number one is the propitiation for the justified by faith in his worthiness. Romans chapter 3, reading from verse 23. In Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All people need this faith to be cleansed, to be saved, to be redeemed, to be justified because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, be justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. In verse 25, in verse 25, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation, a covering, the cleansing and the pardoning of their sin, a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of the sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. In verse 26, it assures us to declare, I say at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him that believeth in Jesus. A pardon comes now by believing on Jesus. Propitiation, covering, cleansing comes by believing on Jesus. The mercy of God, the grace of God now coming by the believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. It tells us in 1 John chapter 2, reading from verse 1. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have 
an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, it says, And he is a propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. In the whole wide world, anyone going to have justification, redemption, reconciliation now must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at number two here. Number two is uh, the perseverance of the justified in faithfulness to the word. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. We're reading from verse 38. It says, Now the just shall live by faith. We enter into the kingdom by faith. And we now continue to walk and live by faith. It says now, the just shall live by faith. And But if any man draw back, if any man says, well, the faith I had at the beginning, that's enough. I cannot go away from the narrow way and go to the broad way, and I'm still fine. No, you are not fine, because if any man draw back my soul shall not have shall have no pleasure in him verse 39 in verse 39 but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition they were saved before they entered in by faith before and now they depart from the way of righteousness. They depart from the highway of holiness. And you say, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, it matters a lot. If any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. We're not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. You will not draw back. I will not draw back. Look at Matthew chapter 24. And we're reading from verse 12. Matthew chapter 24, verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. In verse 13, it says, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved you will endure unto the end. Look at number three here. Number three here, we're looking at the past of the just by faith in the world. The past of the just that the just is following. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. And the path of the just is as the shining light. The path of the just is as the shining light. It's like you wake up in the morning and it's early and the light has just come. This light was not so bright. Then as the day goes on, it becomes brighter and brighter until the noon time that is the brightest. That's the way our lives ought to be. We're walking by faith, we're walking by faithfulness, we're walking in fellowship, and we're walking in the real understanding of focus on the watch of God and the path of the just. It's the shining light that shineth more and more. Your light will shine more and more. Your light will shine more and more. Your faith will shine more and more. And your dedication to God, your consecration to God will shine more and more. Not somebody that you enter in now by faith. And then before a month, before a year, before 10 years, they're already drawing back. And they're not shining as they were shining 10 years ago. No, it says if you're a just person, if you're a justified person, it says the past of the righteous will be shining more and more until the perfect day. Until the perfect day. You've got grace, God will give you more grace. You've got strength, God will give you more strength. You have faith in the Lord, faithfulness in the Lord, and your faith and faithfulness will increase in Jesus' name. 
my faith will increase. My faithfulness will increase. The sufficient grace of God will increase in my life. Uh -uh. The sufficient grace of God. Say that. The sufficient grace of God will increase in my life. The Lord confirm that in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in our prayer. What we have heard today, the faith we ought to have, the justification we have, the life of righteousness we have. Have you entered by faith? Are you expressing your faith? Are you expressing your justification by faith? And are you shining more and more, more and more? Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. And let us commit ourselves to the hands of God. We've heard the word of God. Ask God to help you. That a faith gets passed from you that it will not fail. That God will build you up. And you, of course, will make every effort to follow Christ and find that faith that he has given unto you in the name of Jesus. Pray. And God will help you in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful unto you. We thank you, Lord, for your words that has come unto us. Father, Lord, your word that has come, oh God, my Father, Lord, to build up our faith in you. God of glory, we ask you, oh God, that you will help every one of us, oh God. Father, I never know God as you are as, as you're coming, oh God, as we are expecting your coming. Lord Jesus, help us, O oh God, that Lord will not be of them that draw back unto perdition. Father, I never know God will be of them, O oh God, my Father, that hold unto you, my Father. Lord, that uh, Lord of them, O oh God, whose faith, O oh God, my Father, we keep on growing, O oh God. Father, Lord, even unto a perfect day in the name of Jesus. King of glory, Lord, I pray that Lord, you will help us, O oh God. The Lord Jesus, the work you have given into our hands, oh God, help us, Lord Jesus. None of us will fail in the name of Jesus. Lord, you've asked us, oh God, to occupy until you come. Lord Jesus, I pray that Lord will help us, oh God. That Lord, when you look upon us, oh God, at any time, oh God, on the race, Lord, none of us will be found wanting in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you've answered. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now we bless the name of the Lord for the word of God. As God has spoken unto us, and as we hear the word of God from time to time, we are preparing for the coming of Christ. We are preparing for heaven, for heaven. And even here on earth, if Christ tarries, of course, we are also preparing ourselves to be successful spiritually and all around. And I pray that God will help us to be successful in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We thank God for everyone who joined the meeting this night. And I pray that God will bless you more and more as you make yourself available in the, pre in the presence of God in Jesus' name. Amen. The days of our meeting remain the same. 
We bless the name of the Lord for all the programs that uh, God has been giving us success on. And thank God for our youth that uh, uh, that the program that they went for, God has really built their lives. And I pray that God, you know what God has given unto them, will be permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. So the days of activities remain the same. Uh, every Sunday, we meet at uh, 8.30 a.m. We start the pre service prayer meeting, 8.30 a.m. every Sunday morning. So let us make ourselves available to receive the best from God. We start, I will continue with, uh, we search the scripture by 9 a.m. And then the uh, worship service proper. So as we make ourselves available, God will bless us more and more in Jesus' name. Amen. Then every Monday, just like uh, today, 6.20 p.m. is our time for the Word of God, Bible study. And Friday, 6.20 p.m., revival hour. It's always a wonderful time in the presence of God. So let us make ourselves available and be in time to these programs. Uh, our seniors meet every Wednesday by 6 p.m. Then the children Bible class happens every Thursday. The time is 6 p.m. Then, of course, the youth uh, join by 7 p.m. Same Thursday for the time of a Bible uh that's their own Bible uh, class. Amen. Amen. Let us remember our program. That's our uh, convention coming up. Just next month, about a, a month from today, 25th of July, Thursday through Sunday. So let us make ourselves available. If you have not booked your accommodation, please. Uh, it's getting late. So make sure you book your accommodation. I remember every member is uh, tasked to come with five uh, invitees. So let us make all the efforts to make it happen. And God will bless you more in abundance. A return in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's time for our offering. We're going to pray over our offering that you send with Zell, or if it's fiscal cash and check, you can bring it to uh, the church, our, the, the, our location, Port 915 Sergeant Road, North East, on Sunday when we meet. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful unto you. We thank you, Lord, because you are never tired of blessing us. Lord, you've blessed us again this night with your word. Father, I never know God. We ask, O oh God, that Lord Jesus, you will help us. We'll be faithful in, our, in, our, in return, O oh God, in Jesus' name. God of glory, the token we have, O oh God, before us. We pray that Lord will bless everyone that gives. Father, I never know God bless us more than more, much the more that Lord will also have to give more in Jesus' name. Thank you because we know you've answered, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we've come to the end of uh, the meeting this evening, so we are going to share the grace in fellowship. The grace in fellowship after the count of two, one to go. The grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, the love of God, God, God and the strength of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forever. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.